All right, guys, what's going on? Welcome back to the Everest College Football Podcast. Day, me and Nick here. We do our long-awaited college football playoff predictions. There's some timestamps below if you guys want to skip around because we'll start off with some of our favorite storylines to watch this season and then to cap things off, we'll do some awards, Heisman, and then you know, everything else behind that. Kicking things off, though, with our favorite storylines, my favorite one, Nick, is how will the Buckeyes' defense fare under Jim Knowles? They bring him over from Oklahoma State after, you know, he was the catalyst of a phenomenal defense for the Cowboys last year. I really wanted to see them in the playoffs because I feel like they really would have done a lot of shocking things that people wouldn't have expected. I don't think people really appreciated how good that unit was last year. Now he comes over here to Columbus to take on a whale of a challenge. This Buckeye defense has not been the same since their 2019 playoff run when they had Chase Young there, the anchor everything. It's just been a slot struggle in all areas for them. You know, I want to start with the D-line. They've been incredibly soft, and the linebackers kind of play into this as well. The D-line was supposed to be the tone setters last year. Haskell Garrett, he underperformed, underperformed mightily. I called him the best defensive tackle in college football, and boy, did he disappoint me. You know, they were terrible against the run. In, in the middle of the year, when they weren't really playing anybody, pretty solid. But week two against Oregon, they got hammered. Well, last game of the year, they got hammered against Michigan, and even Utah ran all over them, too. They won that game, of course. But this run defense was the sole reason why they did not make the playoffs last year. I think that these linebackers have to, you know, it's an uphill climb. You know, we switch over to the 4 2 5, so the schematic change might think, make things a little different, a lot harder. Steel Chambers, he's one of two guys they have on this roster that are former running backs converting the linebacker. Chip Trainum comes over from Arizona State. He's going to make that transition as well. Tommy Eichenberg, he was one of their top tacklers last year, but he wasn't very consistent as well. CJ Hicks, incoming five star, I think he's going to play a lot as they look to get some new, new beef, really, here at linebacker. Pretty veteran. Uh, group of defensive linemen as well, though. Zach Harrison, he's been pretty underperforming here as a senior. Uh, Teron Vincent, another redshirt senior. Tyreek Williams, he's one of the more underrated defensive tackles in college football. Jerron Cage, Ty Hamilton. I really like what they got in the interior, so I do think that the potential is certainly there. How much of this schematic change, though, do you think is going to affect the defense? Because the D-line, it shouldn't affect much. You know, they're still throwing four guys out there, but they were just not very good last year. You do have two uh, high-end freshmen from last year, and JT and then Jack Sawyer, who are Rush, but how are they going to stop the run? Because that was the sole reason they didn't make the CFP. Right. This defense last year for Ohio State was a tro Jim Knowles comes over from Oklahoma State. I love the hire. I think it's a great fit. Huge impact defensive coordinator. I love how he brings the 4 2 5 I think it's a strong system. It's my preferred system for defenses in college football. Really? 4 2 5 I think it really works well in today's games. You know, I like what they have. You know, I want to see some step ups. You know, Tommy Eichenberg has to step up at linebacker. You know, didn't have the greatest season last year, but he's a solid player with a lot of potential. I want to see him continue to be that leadership role. One of the more experienced players on the roster. Will he step up this year? That's a big question. The offense for Ohio State is fantastic. They're going to light up the, up the score chart this year, but it's going to be trouble if they can find, the defense find themselves in holes early. I look at another guy like Ronnie Hickman, guy I've been disappointed with for the last few seasons. Want to see him step up. This defense needs to needs to improve very quickly, and you're going to see it week one against Notre Dame. What can this defense do early on in the season? Is this going to be a boomer bust defense? Because if it does not boom, this team is going to miss the playoffs, could find themselves in trouble. That's why this team could find themselves in a hole in September. They play Wisconsin and Notre Dame, whose tight ends are very physical and on the edge. That was a big problem for them last year, not just on the interior. That's a good offensive line as well. So obviously they uh, they're at home and they play Notre Dame and Wisconsin, but. Those are two running games that can really take the wheels off your defense. You know, if you had to guess how many sacks they had last year in those three games against Michigan, Utah, and Oregon, what would you say? Because this number just blew me away. Uh, probably like maybe five. They had a one total sack in those three games. So the run defense was poured. The pass rush wasn't there. And, of course, they didn't have many opportunities because they were getting gashed up on the ground so much. But they just were not very good in any asset facets, you know, because they had 36 sacks on the year, which was a scale Garrett as the leader. So I really want to see this front seven as a whole take that next leap. I think they'll progress nicely, but the personnel is kind of a concern. Not so much on the D-line, but at linebacker. At least in the short term. Long term, I think they'll figure things out. But I don't expect this to be a championship-level defense. The offense will certainly carry the load. You know, 50 points per game, probably. I mean, that's a legit mark they'll probably post. You know, so that's going to lead me to the secondary, though. Denzel Burke, he was the breakout last year. Um, Ronnie Hickman, I like him at safety. He's more of a guy that flies around, makes a lot of tackles. He's kind of a big playmaker. He's not much of a coverage asset. Josh Proctor's a senior, as is Cam Brown. I think the biggest acquisition here, though, Tanner McAllister follows Knowles over from Oklahoma State. This is massive, Nick, a guy that understands this scheme. He's been around a long time with Knowles, so he's obviously going to be the big-time leader for these guys. I can't even imagine what would happen if he were to go down with, you know, a targeting or something or something even worse. I think this, these guys would be in some big-time trouble. They did add some recruits the last couple of years. Jordan Hancock was one of them. Uh, Sonny Styles, the incoming five-star freshman. You know, Jaquiel Johnson, I think he's still around as well. So they got some guys. Maybe the tide is kind of turning on the personnel side of things. I don't think for this year, but again, long-term, I think we'll be all right. They'll start to figure things out. But these guys couldn't cover that well. I didn't think they were terrible. This position was much better than it was two seasons ago. 
but still, the secondary was also a struggle area. And, you know, obviously you need a nice pass rush to blend in with this 4 2 5 the secondary out. I'm just very iffy in all three levels of this defense, even though I think they have some interesting pieces. Not much is going to change, I think, from next from last year to this one, other than because I'm just concerned with the schematic change because the personnel doesn't change much. You know, what are your final thoughts on this unit? Because I think they'll be good enough, but I don't know if they'll be to a level where they're going to win a title for you. Right, no, I think Tanner McAllister is a key piece here. I love the leadership he brings over from Oklahoma State. Solid pickup, followed Knowles, of course. I worry about this defense. I think, you know, early on in the season, I, I'm circling that Wisconsin game. Wisconsin, you know, strong running back team. A team likes to run a ball a whole lot. If they can run all over Ohio State, they can find themselves some serious trouble early on. I like this roster on offense. It's fantastic. One of the best offenses in a very long time in the Big Ten. I just worry the defense may hold this team back, handcuff them a little bit, just like they did last year. I expect them to step up, but they're going to have to find it quickly because this team can find themselves in trouble early on. Now, Oklahoma is my second favorite storyline because I'm really curious. Do they have the personnel to thrive here under Brent Venables? We just talked about that with the Buckeyes. Venables, obviously, long term. We'll figure things out. But look at how this unit performed last year. The defensive line was very talented, very deep. They underperformed significantly. Outside of that Iowa State game where they loaded up the stat sheet, they didn't do much. The secondary, they were outside the top 100 pass defense. Of course, they had some injuries as well and they had some young guys playing, but still was a pretty poor unit. Starting with that D-line, though, Nick, Jeffrey Johnson comes over from Tulane. A guy who's a very similar size player to that of Perrion Winfrey, who was just drafted, who was also a JUCO ad himself, played a very key role for them. He's a very similar size, pretty nimble on his feet. Pretty good replica, I would say, to that of Winfrey. And they're going to pair him up with Jalen Redmond, who has been phenomenal in his career for Oklahoma. I love what they got on the interior here, at least in terms of starters. Well, I don't know how the backups will perform. Isaiah Coe, though, he's a senior. He's back, so I do... I think they got they do have experience. We look at the depth charts, number of juniors and older, so they got that going for them. Ethan Downs, Marcus Stripling, some guys that really not did much from a pass rushing standpoint. Reggie Grimes as well. I'm not sure what's going to happen. I think Clayton White. I believe that's no, what was it? Clayton White is that his name? I don't know. Clayton Smith. There no, 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 no. Oh, I thought you were talking about Deshaun White. <laughs> There's so no, many no, different no, no. outside players. linebackers. Are real. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Looks like Clayton Smith. He was the top recruit for them on defense last year. He's like a top 40 recruit. He's gonna looks like shift to an outside linebacking position. Front seven standpoint, I'm not really sure of the field. T.D. Roof comes over. He's the son of Ted Roof, one of the defensive coordinators on this roster. Deshaun White, he was one of their top tacklers. And he's one of their attorneys here. Front seven-wise, I'm not sure how the field neck. I do think the interior is certainly a plus, but the pass rush, very iffy. Depth all around, I think, might be a little iffy. The secondary is really more important, though. But we'll get to them in a minute. How do you feel about this front seven overall for Oklahoma? Because it's pretty questionable, especially with all the losses they had last year, even though they were very strong. I'm very excited for the interior on this team. I think Jeffrey Johnson from Tulane, another guy we've both of us have circled as a potential star transfer player coming over from Tulane. Had good stats for the Green Wave. It was a pretty poor season for them last year. I like Johnson a whole lot. I think Jalen Ridman as well. You know, solid, solid fit in there as well. I think those two together are very talented. You know, Ethan Downs, not too bad as all Reggie Grimes. And you see a whole lot more out of him. I think this front seven will turn around under Venables over time. I like the recruiting they're going to put into it. But I think this season they might struggle to get after the quarterback a little bit. Looking at Reggie Grimes, though, top-notch athleticism, stripling. Again, he hasn't played much. Smith, though, good bend off the edge. He plays hard, had some really good length. Uh, you know, kind of an off-ball linebacker coming out of high school, so they're converting him here to a full-time outside linebacker. He liked to drop in the coverage and cover the perimeter. So I think this is an ideal player that Brent Venables is going to get out on the field, playing in a recruit who does a lot. You know, they like to run a 4-3, 4-2-5. Venables, you know, he wants to get his safeties down in the box to stop the run, you know. Um, does he have the personnel to do that, though? Because they want to play man coverage as well. The scheme opens the door for big passing plays. You know, I think that will be an area of concern in 2020 because they were 109th in pass defense. You know, their responsibilities are going to differ. The pass rush might not provide that assist. Can they stop the run? That's why I'm pretty concerned, at least for 2022. I do like Trey Morrison coming over from UNC. Been working a lot with Jay Tavavale, uh the DB coach. Might be that hybrid DB that seems to thrive under Venables. You know, Andrew McCumbuck Clemson, he was next up. and He did that last year. Uh, we'll see. What Morrison can do. I like Key Lawrence as well. Spears Jenkins. He's got some good length and speed. Um, you know, he's a freshman who might carve out a role here. So I'm very interested to see what they can do. Getting Woody Washington back. I don't believe he was fully healthy last year. Billy Bowman, uh, a rising sophomore, DJ Graham. So they do have some veterans coming back. I see four veterans here on my starting depth chart added along with the senior transfer of Morrison. So I think the secondary has promise, but they were very disappointing last year. They couldn't cover underneath, couldn't cover downfield. Pass rush, of course, was a little iffy. They did have a good sack number, but it was not that consistent. I think this unit is going to struggle. Obviously, I think on the stat sheet, they're going to prove tremendously, but how they perform against the bigger offenses in the conference? 
right? I think they definitely have some uh, potential to step forward on the stat sheet. You know, the numbers weren't terrible on the pass rush last year, but I really want to see them turn around a little bit. You know, I think Johnson's in for a big year. I, I like Grimes as well. You know, like you said, very athletic. I like his size. I like what his speed possesses as well, but I need to see a little bit more out of him this year. This should be an interesting defense. I like the direction they're going. Trey Morrison, you know, solid player to have. D. Roof as well. I like him coming over. You know, c- coordinator's son. You know, of course, we'll see how he plays. I think this Oklahoma defense is certainly something to look at. I think they can turn the corner long term, but short term, they might be in a little bit of trouble. Now, get my final storyline that I really like. There's a lot of them this year that could really we could talk about for hours, but we're picking just three here today. LSU as a whole under Brian Kelly. A lot of people didn't like this hire. I think it's great. This is a guy who had mid-tier recruiting classes at Notre Dame every single year, but put a lot of guys in the NFL at all positions. So I think uh, Brian Kelly, what can he do with this LSU roster? The offense is pretty interesting. Miles Brennan, we both had him pegged as a starter. He just retired. So obviously Garrett Nussmeyer, a guy who a lot of LSU fans have told us is the next man up. He's in a battle with Jaden Daniels. It's now a two-man race, I, I, I figure. I think Daniels is going to be the favorite here because Mike Denbrock worked with Desmond Ritter at Cincinnati the last four years. And those two guys are very similar in terms of stature and skills, like almost a replica, I'd say. And Daniels, he has a lot of untapped potential, really did not progress one bit at Arizona State. He comes over here at LSU, and I think he's going to get the go here. The running game was not all too good, even though I think TDP was a 1,000-yard rusher. John Emery, he's back. Noah Kane as well. He transferred over from Penn State. So I got some beef in the backfield. Also added a handful of transfers on the O-line. I think Will Campbell, uh, a rising freshman, is going to start. They like him and Garrett Dellinger. So I think they got a nice future here at the tackle positions, even if Dellinger doesn't start this year. Loaded at wide receiver, Nick. You know, Kayshawn Bouti, one of the nation's best at his position, joined by Malik Neighbors, Jack Beach, who could play tight end or wide receiver. Jare Jenkins, Chris Hilton. You know, these guys were all very impactful for them last year. These guys are all rising. A handful of those guys are rising sophomores too, Brian Thomas included. Those four guys were pretty highly recruited coming out of high school. LSU got all of them. And they all played very well last year. So that's very exciting. Joined by Louisiana Lafayette transfer, Kyron Lacey. So I think the offense, I really can't put a prediction. I don't know what to expect from them because this QB battle is very interesting. The running game was not very good, but they're loaded with weapons at all positions. And Daniels, he's a hell of a talent. So I think this is going to be an interesting year for LSU. How do you feel about this offense? Yeah, I really like the direction LSU is going. A lot of people question the hire. I did originally as well, but then I heard Brian Kelly speak at SEC Media Days, and he said he wants to recruit a lot of talent, in-state talent that may have slipped through the cracks the first time, bring a lot of guys in through the portal, you know, get guys they may have not recruited heavily when they were in high school, but may have had a good career at a group of five team or FCS level. I think that I like that idea behind him, you know, bringing in talent that has slipped through the cracks in Louisiana, trying to get his home turf and build it up. I love that recruiting strategy. I think it's a fantastic strategy. We see that with some of the players he's already brought in already. I love this offense potential. You know, Miles Brennan, I thought was going to be the starter. You and I had both agreed on that. He takes his time away from college football. I wish him the best in in what he does in his future. Garrett Nussmeyer, you know, we've heard a lot about him. The comments have been barking about him for a very long time. I think Jaden Daniels is the guy right now for me, but I think Nesmeyer has potential to start if things do not go great for this team throughout the early part of the season. I like this offense, Keyshawn Boutte, you know, a star wide receiver, the next NFL's great wide receiver for me. High draft pick next year, in my opinion. Talented player. I love the potential he has. Just a dynamite player on the field. I like the rest of the offense as well. Jack Beach, solid wide receiver as well. I don't worry about this offensive line because it is a lot of guys that are potentially new or have some lacking experience and fresh potentially pinned in there as well will campbell i'm looking at want to see how he does it left left tackle but this is a fun team i think they're gonna shock a lot of people's expectations that offense mixed with this defense is the biggest reason why i'm so excited for this team this year they added nine transfers on defense six on the secondary all of them were starters at their last schools one of the most banged up units in all of college football last year so they obviously had a little bit of depth here who's neil farrell on the interior well, hold on. Uh, fuck. Okay. The interior's in good hands, though, Nick. I have raved about this defensive line since I started studying this team this year. You know, Mason Smith, a former five-star, he's an impactful pass rusher. He had four sacks. And he played on the outside last year. He's a hybrid guy for them. Jacqueline Roy is a top-ten returner at his position, according to Pro Football Focus. Getting more conditional was a big focal point for him this offseason. The motor's going to get better. He was already a heck of a chaos creator. So getting more condition, a little bit bigger, more stronger. Jacqueline Roy is going to be a problem. I love that outside pass rush as well. Ali Gay, you know, he's 6'6", who's got a nice blend of power. Speed, I mean, this guy is insane. Length is great. Leverage as a pass rusher, he showcases that. He's explosive. Two and a half sacks in four games last year. Expected him to break out, and, and he was on his way to doing that. But B.J. Ojolari, another guy who was really high on last year, he was phenomenal. The consistency has been an issue for him over the last two years, but, you know, high-end athleticism, seven sacks, 11 tackles for loss. 
I love what they have on the interior D line and off the edge. Makai Wingle they added him from Missouri. He's got a good quick off as well. Uh, they picked up two interesting guys here. Uh, well, one really, you know, Mike Jones from last year at linebacker. He was an asset in coverage. You know, this new staff is impressed with him. You know, he should thrive with Matt House here as the defensive coordinator. He was the linebacking coach for the Chiefs. He's a potential breakout star. I think he's going to have a great year. Micah Baskerville, you know, he's speedy, sideline to sideline, rangy tackle. He had 83 stops last year. And then there's two transfers they added. Kobe Fields and West Weeks going to add some depth. They also had a five-star in Harold Perkins. So, and Greg Penn might get involved with goals. So I think this front seven, Nick, has a lot of potential. This is your this is the front seven you want if you want to compete in the SEC West. They have the pieces, but can they get it done? This is a great defense. I love this defense top to bottom. People are asleep on this defense. I think the talent there, Ali Gay, incredible on the defensive end. You know, BJ Olajari as well, solid player. I love his potential. You know, Jacqueline Roy in the middle. I think he's got some serious potential. I love this defensive line. I think it's going to be an absolute wrecking crew this year. They're going to get after a quarterback. You know, Greg Penn, I like him at linebacker. Mike Jones Jr. as well, solid linebacker as well. I like what they brought in in the secondary, revamp secondary, a lot of transfers, but I think all these guys have serious talent. I like Jay Ward as well at free safety, you know, a bit of a leader in the locker room. I love this defense. I'm super excited for it. Speaking of the secondary, they pick up six transfers. Jared Bernard Conover from Oklahoma State, he had 11 pass breakups as a rock-solid anchor on his side of the field. Joe Foucha, highly productive at Arkansas with 74 tackles. Greg Books, also from Arkansas, was a starter at corner. Makai Gardner, ULL. Comes over from Lafayette, third team, all Sun Belt at corner last year. You know, three of those four are from the area. Like you said, you know, Brian Kelly really wants to bring back some local talent. He did that. Seven banks didn't quite break out like we expected. Ohio State didn't play much. He has strong upside, though. I think he's going to get involved in one way or another. Two quality safeties and major burns. And then, you know, former five-star Sage Ryan. But I think Jay Ward's the guy I'm most excited for because he's versatile. He can play safety or corner. Maybe a nickel option to replace Cordell Floggs. You know, I'm pretty sure he got converted as well and he ended up as a, you know, day two NFL selection, you know, safety seems the better fit his skill set because he's a strong tackler, very instinctive. Jay Ward, very excited for him. Mixed in with all these starters. How fast can they gel together is the big question mark. But I, I'm in love with the talent they have. I think that these guys are going to do really good things this year. Top to bottom, if they stay healthy, this defense is going to be nasty. I agree. This defense is incredible. You know, Savon Banks, I'm really excited to see what he can do. You know, didn't work out of Ohio State, but he has some potential here to step up and be involved. I hit the, hit it before with Jay, Jay Ward. You know, I like Brooks Jr. as well. Solid player. This defense is super exciting. This team is definitely one to look at in the SEC West. Move to the next favorite storyline. I know the top one is, will Dabble make a change under center? Cade Klubnik will begin the year as a number two. DJ Uyungale, one of the Heisman favorites from a season ago, will be the starter. It's kind of a disappointing year. 55% comp rate. Nine touchdowns, ten picks. I mean, they were scared to even throw it downfield, it seemed, in the bowl game. 6'4", 250. He's a bit of a dual-threat guy. doesn't really have speed, but he's got that size that can help you win. It's kind of like Cardell Jones from a few years ago. Remember, Ohio State used him as a runner because fourth and one, fourth and two. Nobody's going to stop this guy. He's going to go right through him. So he is a former five-star talent in his own right. In 2020, he had two starts where he absolutely shined. It just They lacked chemistry. Confidence was not there. Uh, that was his theme throughout the entire year, Nick. This team played a lot of close games because they could not throw the ball at all so i'm very con not very concerned maybe because you know the talent is not really there at wide receiver or the offensive line like we want it to be but this is still clemson this is going to be a you know high expectation here for their quarterback room and like Dabo was shown before he will not hesitate to make a change remember kelly bryant a couple years ago you know trevor lawrence was barking up the tree right behind him after three or four games t-law was put in the game and uh you know that was all she wrote for kelly bryant's career t-law went on to win a natty and you know do a lot of other big things so Dabo's shown before he will not hesitate to pull the trigger. DJ will be on the year as a starter, short leash, though. How do you see it playing out? All right, this is why I watched from the, in the ACC this year. I was a big fan of, of DJ. You know, I thought that I looked at the film last year from the two games against Clemson and BC in 2020. I, I broke down that film. I was very impressed by it, especially the Notre Dame game. How in such a hostile environment, he stood in there in the pocket, made great throws, made a lot of great decisions. I love the dual threat ability there. But then it just last year, it all seemed to fall apart. I think some of it definitely is on the weapons he has or the lack there of weapons he has, I should say. You know, I definitely think that Clemson has sort of fallen off on the recruiting trend, the offensive line as well as in their wide receiving core. I just think that, you know, if this starts to fall apart, you know, Dabo's going to make a move here. Cade Klubnik, five-star quarterback, love the potential there. Good film and height player i don't think he's anywhere near the level of trevor lawrence but i think he has some potential to be a strong quarterback for this clemson team you know Clem uh, debo and clemson are not going to want to go through a season like they had last year they want to be contending for a national championship again they want to contend in the acc last year was certainly a down year for the tigers if dj is making mistakes early on clay k klubnik will be coming in and we'll have to see how he does you know a stat that really blows my mind 
from the NC State game. I think they had like seven straight three and outs at one point. The defense was on the play for was on the field for 96 plays. And they only allowed 386 yards. That is absolutely elite work. And they ended up losing that game because the offense could not do anything one bit. So obviously that was the one thing that held this team back. That's why they did not make the playoffs last year. That's why they didn't win the conference last season. It's very shocking how poor the offense was. Then your second storyline, you know, this, I wouldn't say this is a massive one. So I'm curious as to why you pick Utah to repeat as a conference champion as a storyline you're really watching. Now, obviously, Utah gets a lot back on both sides of the ball. You know, Cam Rising's phenomenal. Tavion Thomas was great. He's running behind a great offensive line as well. Two phenomenal tight ends in Brant Cousy and Dalton Kincaid. And obviously, you know, I'll get to the defense in a minute, but they have the biggest game probably in Pac-12 history in week one on the road at Florida because this conference is lacking respect. They are under attack from all over the place for their programs. And there's just no one respects the Pac-12 at all right now. And this is a big opportunity there for them to do that. Obviously, Oregon plays Georgia week one. We don't expect them to do anything. We expect Utah to win this game. And can they do it? And how do you feel about Utah repeating? Because this is a big storyline to you. Right. I picked Utah repeating as my storyline, potentially. You know, you and I both are very high on USC and Lincoln Riley. And we both believe that that team will win the Pac-12. But a lot of people I've spoken to, a lot of SEC fans specifically, believe that Utah is going to repeat in the Pac-12 and they do not believe USC has what it takes currently right now to re to win that conference. I love what Utah returns. You know, that offense is incredible. Tavion Thomas, the speed he has, Micah Bernard behind him, great one-two punch there, Cam Rising, incredible quarterback, dual threat ability, fantastic. You know, I love the offense. The line's solid. I love the defense as well. They replace some talent. Of course, they lose some good guys like Devin Lloyd, but I think they have some serious potential on the defense to return the schedule too. I mean, I want to play Florida. You, you nailed it there. One of the most important games in Pac-12 history, if not the most important game in Pac-12 history. This game means so much to the conference with all of the realignment and all that going on. This this is a huge game in the swamp. I've been to that stadium, hostile environment. It's hot, it's loud. It's going to be a tough place to play in late August, early September. I think this is a super exciting team and I think they definitely can win the Pac-12 potentially. I'm still going to pick USC right now, but it's a great storyline in my opinion. I think they have a real chance to make some noises here. They do host USC, so they have that going for them at least. But yeah, like on defense, Junior Tafuna's back. Van Fillinger was great. Cole Bishop as well as a freshman. So they had some guys that, I mean, obviously they're replacing a big chunk of their defense, but they had guys that were stepping up last year. They were incredibly young. You know, their defensive line, I see nothing but, you know, sophomores rather. And, you know, that's obviously concerning, but these guys all played last year. They have a nice rotation. I like that. And I'm very interested to see how Lander Barton plays at linebacker. Him or Ethan Calvert, those guys were two of the highest recruited players in school history in terms of, uh, you know, the ranking coming out of high school. So I think those guys are getting on the field and they're going to make an impact. It's one thing I'm watching for Utah. And your last one here, Georgia's front seven. That's a new look unit, how they look. I'm pretty sure they, they lost every single starter other than, I think, Nolan Smith. And then Jalen Carter he wasn't a starter, but he is the best defensive tackle in college football. I thought he was the best at times on that D-line, which is insane a lot because they had, what, two or three guys drafted first round. Eight and a half tackles for loss. Very explosive, quite nimble on his feet powerful you know i think he moves very well for his size and i think he's the top dt in cfb but what will it look like around him is a real question mark because you have nazir stackhouse of 6'3", 2, uh, 320 zion logue 6'5", 295 warren brenson's a veteran this group is really up for grabs we're not going to see what the rotation will be maybe probably until week one you know i'm not sure who's going to start where and who's going to be the guy to watch other than carter you know they're top two in run defense each of the last three seasons though so i'm not worried one bit um Maybe a little bit in terms of who will step up, though, in terms of depth, because they only had two guys ranked inside the top 20th position two years ago in their recruiting class. And of course, they got three incoming now. They're ranked inside the top 15, Michael Williams being one of them. But I'm always hesitant on true freshmen on what role they'll play, how fast can they adjust. I do think Bear Alexander, though, being 6'3", 325, he's a great candidate to be an impact true freshman here. Um, so I'll get you your thoughts on the D-line here in a second, but at linebacker, they're fine. Two five-stars at middle linebacker, Smale Munden, great pursuit. Athletic ability and coverage has really stood out. Excited for his potential. He's even sorry. Strong, but wasn't exactly a downhill thumper in high school. And, you know, could potentially be an off-ball linebacker here or come off the edge early in the season if they need it, but he'll adjust. He'll play physical. That physical brand that they want. Robert Beal, he's essentially a veteran at this point. Had a tackle for loss in five of the last six games. He stepped up into Adam Anderson's departure. He should lead the team of sacks this year. And then Nolan Smith, you know, coming back is going to do wonders for his draft stock. Great first step. Natural downhill pass rusher. Um, they do have some short question marks here on the front seven, but I think we'll find out quite soon. That, um, there really is no question marks. I think they're going to do great. Um, I do want to see Smith progress, though, in terms of getting to the quarterback, because from an athletic standpoint, he's great, but it doesn't have great power or length. I want to see if, uh, you know, he was bulked up in the weight room this offseason. That's my thoughts on that front seven, Nick. What are yours? All right. I highlighted this as a 
a storyline to watch for me. You know, that Georgia defense last year, one of the best of all time, replaced so much talent. So many guys get drafted incredible amounts, but I think they will be just fine. I want to see how some of these younger guys play. You know, I like Jalen Carter, very talented player in Nazir Stackhouse. So very excited to see what he can do. You know, I think it's possible that some of the true freshmen get involved early on. I'm looking at Mikel Williams. I think he has some potential to be involved early on. I don't know if Kirby Smart will go for true freshman, but I think it's completely possible at this point in time. I like Nolan Smith as well. Solid guy, you know, good veteran leadership. Robert Beal as well. I like his sort of transition. Xavier Story as well, you know, good tackler. I like what he can do. Interesting to see how he kind of adjusts the game. It will be a little bit different than how he played in high school. I think this is a good front seven. I think George defense will be a usual George defense, but it is normal to expect a drop off considering how good they were last year that's going to have to happen you know there's always going to be a drop off when you lose that much talent but it's just going to be how much of a drop off that drop off is now looking at my college bowl player predictions we don't spend too much time on bama or ohio state since we've spent all off season talking about them you've probably heard everything you need to hear but bryce young heisman winner from a season ago shattered school records they had jameer gibbs a dual threat guy from georgia tech you know it's a loaded backfield for them jace mcclellan Trey Sanders, they're set there. The offensive line is the biggest concern because they were flat out terrible last year and they still hammered Georgia and almost beat them again in the natty. So, I mean, that's obviously not very good for the rest of college football. You got guys like JV and Cohen, Emil Iki, or a guard coming back. Tyler Steen comes over from Vanderbilt. So, the offensive line is certainly a work in progress, but the talent is there, especially with Brock Meyer and Latham, former five stars, they're going to find their way into the lineup. Tyler Harrell, he comes over from Louisville. Absurd speed from him. Jermaine Burton comes over as a vertical threat from Georgia. Ja'Cory Brooks, we expect him to step up. I mean, he was making plays late in the year last year. Of course, Nadaddy had some issues. But overall, I was pretty pleased of how he performed. You know, in that Auburn game, he had to step up and make a play. And that's what he did. Depth at this receiving core isn't great. You know, Georgia Earl's now hurt. A lot of it, I think they have five incoming freshman wide receivers. So they might be in the same boat as last year when it comes to the needing guys to step up. Top to bottom, Alabama offense, one of the nation's best. I agree. Great offense. You know, I love what they can do. Tyler Steen, solid, solid pickup. I think he might be the biggest impact transfer in the sec i love what he can do got to protect bryce young's left side sometimes in the film last year bryce young finds himself in trouble when he gets pressed from the left side you know not his fault obviously that's going to need some strong blocking there i like the they were opposite wide receiver a new look wide receiving core but i think tyler harrell's speed ridiculous jermaine burton jermaine burton i love what he can do you know jameer gibbs as well in the backfield solid running back i think uh Ja'Cory brooks in for a huge season as well and i'm excited for this offense now we got the defense the run, they struggled against the run early on in the year against Florida. They were getting gashed up. Linebacking positioning was just awful. Secondary positioning at times throughout the year was also very concerning. So when people say that this was a rebuild year, Nick Saban himself really for Alabama, I guess that's okay to say, but they certainly underperformed. So I don't want to have any excuses here because I had the personnel. The defensive line hasn't been as dominant, especially in the interior as it should have been, you know, since Quentin Williams was there. But they do have three seniors, DJ Dales there, Byron Young. They have great depth on the D-line, so they got guys that will contribute. I think the biggest storyline, though, with this defense is the linebacking group. Will Anderson, obviously, was should have been a Heisman finalist last year. 33 tackles for loss. Had, like, 17 sacks or so. Dallas Turner was a breakout star. He's going to continue to grow. He's a freshman last year. Had double-figure tackle for losses. Henry Teoto would have been, a, you know, probably a day-two draft pick. He comes back after leading the team in tackles. And then Jalen Moody's a redshirt senior. I'm glad he stuck around. I think he's going to benefit tremendously by playing one more year here in Tuscaloosa. Front seven. I'm going to say it's pretty elite because defensive line is obviously a little bit of a concern, but outside linebacking, no one's going to be able to stop that duo. Uh, you know, if they stay healthy, this is going to be a tremendous challenge for opponents. I agree. This defense is fantastic. Dallas Turner, guy I was super high on last year. Everyone that knows me very well knows that I you know, say it every time. I was super high on him coming in last year. Had a great impact. Did better than I even thought he would. I love him and Will Anderson coming. Will Anderson, you know, should have been in New York for the Heisman. I think he gets there this year. I'm excited for this defense, you know, Henry Toa Toa can definitely produce again. He had over 100 tackles last year. People said that it was a down year for him. Want to see what he can do. Four years of SEC experience. You know, super talented player. I love what they return on this front seven. Super, super talented top to bottom. Look at the secondary that pretty much underperformed last year. Malachi Moore being one of those guys who got his job taken by Brian Branch, who has, you know, relentless intentions off the edge. They use him in a variety of different ways. I like Branch. Kyrie Jackson struggled last year when he was forced into action. You know, they were pretty beat up at corner. Eli Ricks, though, transfers over the anchor down one of the corner spots. Kool-Aid McKinstry, rising sophomore. So they got some young guys here at the cornerback positions. I think these guys are really going to develop under Nick Saban, who's a phenomenal DB coach. And then Jordan Battle and DeMarco Helms at safety. Battle is one of the top safeties in the country. Helms, you weren't very happy with him last year, I know, but he's still a senior, and he did make good plays for them. Secondary should perform very well. Last year, I thought they'd be the best in the country. I was wrong by a quite wide margin. You know, Josh Job performed. Pretty poorly, I'd say, especially in that game against Traylon Burks. We got completely schooled. 
top to bottom, the defense, they got veterans, they got young guys that are going to step up. Mix of everything here. It's going to be a pretty scary unit this fall. Say that DeMarco Holmes disappointed me a little bit last year, but I think he is a two truly talented player underneath that layer of disappointment he built last year. But in general, I think you know, his defense is great. Secondary is solid. Malachi Moore disappointed me last year. I want to see more out of him. I love his freshman year, but it just kind of didn't really work last year for him. Can he play back together and get back a starting job this year? I don't know if that's possible. We'll see how it continues to go for him. This Alabama team, top to bottom, fantastic. They should easily win the national championship. I love the talent they have. We're already talked about the Ohio State defense. We'll focus on the offense here. Speaking of high end guys that were coming out of high school that we thought would do good was Travion Henderson. I picked him to be the top impact freshman in college football. And I think he probably did that. You know, 1,200 yards rushing, 15 scores, 300 plus, another four through the air. He did a lot for them. Great backfield. They have him and Mayan Williams. Evan Pryor, knee injury here just a couple of days ago. He'll be out, not worried. They have some great depth for those two phenomenal backs. CJ Stroud, he was my Heisman selection from a season ago. 4,400 yards, completed 72% of his balls, 44 touchdowns. Just the confidence and relentlessness he has. Uh, you know, it's the resilience, rather. You know, he's insane, you know, in those games that we talked about earlier, the Utah and the Oregon game and all that, the Michigan. Third and long, fourth and short, doesn't matter. He converted them every single time when this football team needed them uh, because the defense had no pulse one bit. Against Utah, it's like fourth and five. He's at the 25. He looks to the left, sees one-on-one -on -one coverage, walks it to Marvin Harrison for a touchdown. He did not hesitate to pull the trigger on fourth down. I just, that's what I love about this kid, and I think that a lot of people don't understand that about him. He did a lot for them on those downs that they really needed him. Uh, you know, he was first and fifth, no, first and third in school history in single yardage in a game in those two games that they lost. So, well, actually, no, the Utah and the Oregon game, rather. So two close games they had. He had to put up school records for them to win those games just by, or lose. They lost one of them, you know, but they had to win against Utah by a couple of points. I mean, he had to put up school record efforts for that to happen pretty much. Jackson Smith and Jigwa comes back, 95 grabs, 1,600-plus yards. He was phenomenal. Of course, they lose two first-rounders, but Amika Amigba, uh, Julian Fleming, two high-end five-star recruits. They're both the top-ranked wide right receiver in their class, along with Marvin Harrison, who showcased some nice short area quickness and had three scores in that Rose Bowl when he got his chance to shine. So no concern here for me from this offense. Obviously, they got um, some issues maybe on the interior O-line. They do replace a handful of guys. DeWan Jones is great. Paris Johnson is going to kick out to his natural position, a jar of a tackle, rather. I'm very happy with this Ohio State offense. 45.7 points per game last year. I think they will continue the road. And Luke Weipler, he was pretty good at uh, on the interior as well. So this offense, top to bottom, will this offense score 50 points per game? I think it's completely possible. I love the type of talent this offense has. Jackson Smith and Jigba is such a fun player to watch. I love what he can do. We saw in the Rose Bowl game, I mean, ridiculous numbers from him. Julian Fleming, Marvin, Marvin Harrison Jr., super talent. I love both of them. Yeah, I like the depth as well. Solid depth across the board. You know, the running back, you know, duo they have there. I exciting to cj stroud you know a lot of people had him high on early on last year some people doubted whether or not he had the potential to live up to it that first game against minnesota looked rocky at times but he steadied the ship steadied it throughout the season got better as time progressed and is an absolute star quarterback i love the potential he has this year to lead this team offensive line i kind of like what they've done here i think they've made some good moves Just put some guys that's better their more natural position some solid moves the offensive line should actually Paris Johnson Jr. on the left side. I think that's the side to watch. I want to see what they can do. Donovan, Donovan Jackson Donovan does not have Donovan Jackson does not have the best experience. But I like to see him step up. Paris Johnson, I like what he can do. I'm excited for this Ohio State team. The sky's the limit. This offense is incredible. It's all about defense. We talked about it earlier, but the defense is where this the key for this team is. Look at my number three seed, USC. You know, I hate to pick this team to go 13 and 0, especially since I am a USC fan. But you look at their schedule and you look at the offense that they put together in the offseason. I just don't know who they're going to lose to because the Pac-12 is obviously not very strong. The defense we'll get to in a minute. We'll give an overall summary here of this football team. Lincoln Riley comes in and does wonders. Top-ranked transfer portal class. Three new guys, a wide receiver. Jordan Addison won the Blitnikoff last year. Mario Williams was a great slot weapon for them, who probably could have did a little bit more, but as an incoming freshman, he was really good for them. Brendan Rice as well wasn't utilized correctly at Colorado, but he's the son of Jerry. They also got Terrell Bynum as well. You mix that in with some veterans like Gary Bryant. Taj Washington was highly explosive. These guys are deeper than anything here at wide receiver. This is just absurd what they put together in the offseason. Obviously, the offensive line, as soon as Clay Helton left, all of a sudden was pretty solid. Andrew Voorhees factors in to be a potential first-round selection next year. He's joined by a handful of seniors, too. And they also picked up Bobby Haskins, a transfer who will probably slot in there at left tackle. Of course, the king here of the crop was Caleb Williams coming over from Oklahoma. They followed each other to L.A., um, emerged last year. He's a favorite for the Heisman this season, Williams, in this conference. He's going to put up great numbers. His poise, you know, the ability last year he showcased in that Texas game, still one of the greatest things I've ever seen. Where he comes in, 
fourth, what was it, fourth and short, runs for a 60-yard touchdown. Late in the game, has multiple great throws for touchdowns. You know, even later in that game, the, the, the snap hit the floor. He picked it up, scrambled, found a guy in the end zone. Absurd, you know, what he was able to do in his first career appearance against a tough team in a tough game. Also picked up three great guys at running back, Austin Jones, Travis Dye from in-conference. Kind of funny that Lincoln Riley's adding guys from the conference when he was, you know, kind of bashing on that a couple years ago. Darwin, Darwin Barlow from TCU from two years ago, and then five-star Relic Brown, he flips. Offense is pretty ridiculous, Nick. I don't know how these guys won't put, you know, 35, 40 points per game on the board, especially in this conference. They're absolutely loaded. Um, what are your thoughts on this unit? Why do you think it's will lead them to the playoffs? Fantastic offense. I love what they can do. Caleb Williams come over. Loved what he did in the in the games last year. Came in, you know, took over for a, for a Heisman favorite, in Spencer Rattler. Caleb Williams was super exciting last year. I loved his. I love what he could do. Very exciting. You know, solid guy. I like what they have in wide receiver Mario Williams. You know, together solid number two and number three wide receivers. I think those guys those guys have a lot of potential as well. Terrell By- Byram as well. You know, could maybe get involved with the wide receiver Z role. And then of course Jordan Addison with the call winner last year incredible wide receiver so talented had a great year at Pitt. this seems to be a great fit for him he gets the nil money i love the fit here on the west coast and bobby haskins is transfer at left tackle i like that side I like the left side in general you know i think that's a solid left side of the offensive line this offense is gonna be a lot of fun to watch the pack i'm excited for them obviously the reason a lot of people will be like no usc's not making the playoffs is because of the defense they they're really just trying to learn how to play football again nick because under clay helton this was just a terrible unit the pass rush was sluggish the corners would commit a lot of penalties because their backs are turned for forever it's not like they were covering very well anyways they just need to learn to play football again you know my favorite of all was the bad angles they would take off the edge to stop the run all over the place really you know it was just pathetic so they're learning how to play football again they had 11 transfers to a roster it's got some solid talent on it 11 transfers along with two five stars of zion branch and damani jackson the defensive line has some potential tui tui lapotu he's solid stanley as well they're at defensive tackle brandon philly some veterans those guys are loaded with size as well you know nick figueroa he's a senior defensive end Corey foreman they're expected to you know get big things out of him a former number one recruit he decides to stick around he's going to be one of the anchors here on this defensive front picked up a handful full transfer that linebacker shane lee romeo height they come from alabama and auburn respectively you pick up eric gentry who was a first team all freshman performer last year from arizona state and then raylan goforth a senior so i think linebacking core a lot of expectations for them because they have this, these new talents that come over from some pretty respectable schools overall this front seven has some good potential but again nick they are just learning to play football again do you think that's gonna right. happen Right, this is going to be a, be a long-term project here for this USC defense. I think they'll definitely continue to turn it around as the time goes on. I like what this defense can do potentially in the future. I think they brought in the right pieces here and there. You know, I like what they have with Shane Lee. I think he's exciting. You know, I like bringing in Mackay Beckman as well. Or, sorry, let me do that again. I like that they bring in Makai Blackman as well. This is a solid defense. I like the front seven, Nick Figueroa. I think he has some potential as well. This is an exciting team. But I think that people are right to have concerns right now about the defense. Looking at the secondary, this was a pretty poor unit the last few seasons. I mean, I remember the one recruiting class, they had number five stars. And where are they now? Not in the NFL, I don't believe. So, Makai Blackman, coming over from Colorado, he was great for them. They lost a lot of talent. He was one of them. Matrell McCutcheon from Oklahoma. Bryson Shaw from Ohio State. So, they picked up some nice talents there at these uh, corner and safety positions. Xavier Alford and Kalen Bullock, two young guys that provided a lot of energy for them last season. They're very excited for what those guys can do. Kalen Bullock showcased a tremendous ball skills. Pretty undersized, 6'3", 180. So I want to see him get bigger so he can, you know, be a better tackler there at that safety position. But secondary is pretty solid, I would say, in terms of expectations. I think that they'll do pretty well this year. Um, that newfound energy, too, is very important. A lot of people are forgetting that about Lincoln Riley. This program had no energy with Clay Helton. He was there for way too long. And these guys just didn't want to play football. That's probably why they need to relearn how to play it, because I don't think they wanted to play it. So I think that's one thing that's kind of underrated. These guys are very excited now. And with the offense they have on the other side, they know if they put their heart and soul into this football team, they can accomplish big things. I think this defense has some potential. I love the secondary. You know, we were talking about them earlier. You know, I think they brought in some right pieces. They have some good experience. Some guys are getting back in here. A young secondary. They'll continue to grow as time goes on. I'm excited for this defense potentially over the next couple of seasons. I'm excited for this team as large as they you know, transition to Lincoln Riley. They leave behind the dark ages of Clay Heldon. I think Lincoln Riley was a great hire, and this USC team is a lot of fun to watch. I'm looking at NC State, the Wolf Pack. I do have them beating Clemson and winning the ACC. Devin Leary, he was great last year, you know. He really progressed tremendously because two years ago he was not good. Showcased some promise. Uh, 
well, three years ago, really, you know, two years ago, he showcased nice promise, but then he got injured. 35 touchdowns, five picks. Accuracy, nice touch, reigns supreme over opponents. You know, Leary doesn't possess that great physical skill set, but, you know, he's kind of a limited pocket passer. But I do think this is a very sound quarterback who's going to continue to get better. They obviously lose Ike McQuanu up front. They also lose 92% of their rushing production. Uh, the offensive line is still very good. You know, Anthony Belton, 6'6", 330. The ideal replacement for Ike, that size is great. Price and Spees might be the starter early on, but those guys will compete for that. Grant Gibson, one of the nation's top centers. He's a great run blocker. You know, I think this O line is going to be tough. I mean, maybe, maybe not as great as last year. I don't expect much fall off the running game. We'll see what happens. I got a handful of guys. Uh, George Houston, you know, I know some NC State fans were telling me how excited they are for him. They lose Amika Mezzi at wide receiver, but Thayer Thomas, he's been a great slot guy. He's probably abused outside more. Devin Carter, very, very consistent over the past three years, coming off a career season. Daryl Jones comes over from Maryland. Uh, Carter, he might play the X receiver, 6'3", 216 there. Part, Porter Rooks, he's a guy they really want to get on the field as well. You know, Daryl Jones and Anthony Smith have some speed. I really like Trent Penix. Very interesting to see the season he has because he makes that conversion from running back to tight end. And, you know, a lot of his production, 236 and three scores, came over the final five games. So him and Christopher Todd, 6'4", 240, some bigger red zone threats there on that offense. I think this is going to be a very sound unit. A lot of people are, uh, you know, underestimating. But can they protect the ball like they did last year? Because five picks, that's a very low number. That's hard to get two years in a row. You know, I like Devin Leary a lot, a guy that came from New Jersey, a Northeast product, ends up at the ACC, you know, two-time Gatorade Player of the Year for high school football in the state of New Jersey. You know, he's a solid quarterback. I love what he can do. He had great stats last year. You know, the five interceptions is such a low number. Is he going to be able to repeat that? I don't know. I think he'll be in, in line for a few more turnovers this year, but I love what they have. I think the offensive line, question marks, of course, for facing Aikimo Kwanu is a tough replacement, very strong. Uh, offensive tackle that went early in the NFL draft. I like their wide receiving court. You know, Devin Carter, solid. You know, P- Porter Rooks, I'm excited to see what he can do this year. Anthony Smith as well, not a bad player. I think this is a solid team. Trent Penix as well. I'm excited to see his how his transition goes. Jordan Hughes, running back. This is an exciting offense. I think they'll be a lot of fun to watch. Everyone's high on this team due to getting back 10 starters on a great defense. They're 23rd in FBS against the run. Um, I like how they get Corey Durden back, 6'4", 310. He's not a stat sheet warrior, but he's more of a player that frees things up around him, which is great when you have this elite linebacking core behind you, like Savian Jackson, CJ Clark, David Van was solid with nine QB hurries, Joshua Harris, 6'4", 325. So the defensive line's loaded. And speaking of that elite linebacking core, Peyton Wilson was hurt in the third game of the year. Isaiah Moore was great as well until getting hurt after seven games. You know, these guys combined for well over 200 tackles in 2020, so they weren't able to stay healthy, which was unfortunate, but allowed Drake Thomas to step up and shine. 99 tackles, 13 half TFLs, even had three picks. Made plays and coverage. It was great against the run. They also have solid depth at linebacker as well. This front seven is as elite as they come. It's a like front six, really. But, you know, sometimes we'll get seven guys down there into the box. But I think this front six, seven is going to lead the charge. They have to perform, and I expect them to do great things in this conference. I love what they have. Drake Thomas, exciting player. I love what he did last year. Stepped up in his absences. Corey Durden, super talented. Savion, Savion Jackson. C.J. Clark, I love those two. I think they're very strong. Isaiah Moore as well. I love what this team has top to bottom on the front seven. They return so much talent on defense. They're going to continue to improve as time goes on. This defense is dynamite. Now, the secondary they had has taken some big strides under Dave Doran. Second last year in conference, or in FBS rather, an opponent completion rate allowed 100% of the snaps are back in the secondary. CB1 is a lot down for Shaheen Battle. He was good in 2020, continued to get better last year. Tyler Baker-Williams, I was really interested to see who would step up at nickel, and he was the one that did it. He became a very reliable contributor there. Tanner Engel, first team all-conference a season ago. He's back with 70 tackles. Um, CB2 is a little bit shaky. Devon Boykin, Cyrus Fagan will battle for that spot. Uh, occupy the other safety spot, rather. CB2 is still a little shaky. Um, we'll see what happens. I think they need some more consistency out of that CB2 and the secondary overall. But I just rave about the front six slash seven, and then you get everybody back in their secondary. This defense is going to be a problem, and if they disappoint, I'm really going to be shaking my head. I agree. This defense is awesome. You know, I think this is a really talented team, top to bottom with the defense. Shane Battle, excited to see him back. Cyrus Fagan as well, like what he can do. This is a great defense. It's a great team. I think they should win the ACC this year. This might be a controversial pick. Some people might not agree with us, but both of us have them winning the winning the ACC and making the college football playoff. I love this NC State team. They showed me a lot last year by beating Clemson and making huge strides. I'm super excited for this team. Now we'll get at next college football playoff predictions. Oh, it's the same. You know, I don't know how this happened, but it does make sense because we both really like NC State, USC. They have that offense with a terrible schedule. The top, it's really, you're, not, you're only picking two teams really because Bama and Ohio State are locks. Even if they don't make the playoffs, we're not going to be mad because everyone has them. We feel those are great picks to make. 
So we'll focus on our first two out. The only difference is I have Notre Dame, you have Clemson. I think the Irish are going to be an interesting team this year. A lot of people aren't happy they're number five in the preseason poll. Chris Tyree, plenty of speed at running back. Tyler Buckner, you know, this is a guy who has, a, he's a versatile player, you know, 6'1", 215. Wasn't great as a passer last year, but, you know, he's got very good speed. He's going to grow this season with some more playing time. The offensive line really picked it up at the end of the year. You know, they were terrible early on in the season. You know, started running the ball better. You know, Oklahoma State really had their number in the bowl game, but they kept the pass rush at bay, you know what I mean? Uh, Jarrett Patterson is the nation's best center, elite run blocker, did not give up a sack either. I like Blake Fisher. I was excited for him, but he was pretty solid in his debut until he got hurt. They were down there in the third string tackle at one point. So now that they're healthy, now that they have Blake Fisher back, you know, I think that these guys, you know, because he came back in that bowl game against Oklahoma State, 70 dropbacks, he didn't allow a single sack. So I like what he can provide. And that was the nation's top pass rush as well, I might add. Zeke Corelli is there to provide depth. Joe Walt is a veteran at left tackle. Josh Lugg as well. We always trying to find the flow late in the year. Avery Davis just tore his ACL, so wide receivers are concerned. But Michael Mayer is there to lead the charge at tight end. Braden Lindsey, Lorenzo Styles. One of those guys are going to have to step up. We'll see what happens. Overall, I think the offense is solid, but the defense, Nick, I love it. Isaiah Fowski, 11 sacks, six forced fumbles. Uh, they, the, the 80 Mullyla twins, these guys were second and third on the team behind Fosky and Sacks, Riley Mills as well. They have great um, depth on this D line. A lot of people are not acknowledging it one bit. And they also have veterans at linebacker. JT Bertrand's one of them, Bo Bauer, Jack Kaiser. These guys have been around a handful of years now. The only player they really lose in the secondary is Kyle Hamilton. They replaced him with Brandon Joseph, an All American from Northwestern. A suspect secondary. You know, Cam Hart is probably the most physical corner in the roster. These guys, I think that they're going to lose to Ohio State because, the. I mean, I just don't see them being able to press the way they want to against those Ohio State pass catchers. I don't think the personnel is going to match up well. So I think if they lose that game, but that's it. I have Notre Dame at 11-1. I think this team's just going to be really great. Uh, it's a pretty bold prediction with how everyone disrespects the Irish. 11-1 for me. Tough schedule. Why do you have Clemson as one of your first two out? I think Clemson are as super tall as a team, top to bottom. I love what they have on defense. That defense is one of the best defense, one of the best defenses in the country. Brian Brise, ridiculous talent. I love what he can do coming off there on the front seven. I I love this defense. I think Clemson is a really strong defense. Will carry them. The offense we touched on the worries earlier with the battle between Club Nick and DJ. And I think the weapons are definitely concerning. But I do look at a guy like Will Shipley. I like him at running back. Expect him to carry the load heavy this year. Joseph Nagata as well. I like him at wide receiving X. Solid player. Brandon, Brandon Spector as well. I like him. Solid wide receiver in the slot. But this defense top to bottom has so much talent. Miles Murphy, Tyler Davis, Xavier Thomas. Even though Xavier Thomas is a little bit injured, he may miss the first couple of weeks. I do think this is a super talented front seven. I love what they have. Trenton Simpson. Simpson. I think this Clemson team is solid. I, I think that... You know, it is a question mark because Dabo did lose both his coordinators and you could maybe expect a step down. But I think when you also look at the secondary, they have a guy like Andrew McCumba who's who's going to continue to improve as a player. Nate Wiggins, I like him at cornerback as well. The schedule is favorable as well. You know, they do play Notre Dame. They play Notre Dame, right? Yeah. Okay. They do play Notre Dame. That could be a tough matchup. They play NC State as well, which will be the one loss that I have currently for them at 11-1. and one. I like this Clemson team. There's a little too much to have them out of the first two out. I think they're a solid team top to bottom. A lot of Clemson fans would expect them to be in the playoffs. I think they'll be right knocking on the door. And Georgia as well. We both agree that they're the first two out. They have a lot of talent top to bottom. So they'll be in the playoff hunt as well. Notre Dame hosts Clemson. I have them winning that game. You have the Tigers winning it. I think it's going to be very interesting. That could really... That can really decide a playoff spot late in the year, so we'll see what happens there. In Georgia, we're not really going to talk about. We both have them losing to South Carolina week three. It's a tough challenge to go play that team on the road in week three. You know, you have a lot of turnover on defense. Obviously, they're going to figure things out on both sides, whoever they lose players at. But I think South Carolina, I believe that's going to be a night game. And Georgia, you know, early on in the year, that's, that's when you want to have them. That's when you want to get them. So I think South Carolina will win that game. And then we both have Bama beating them in the SEC title game. But Georgia will be right there knocking on the door, but they have a, you know, not, not a great schedule. I wish they would have tougher opponents, even though, I mean, they did schedule Oregon under the conference, but in conference, it's kind of iffy. So we both have Alabama over Ohio State in the national championship. Those are college football playoffs. It's unfortunate. It's very similar, but that's what we're going to rock with. I'm capping off some awards here. Heisman for me. Last year, I went with C.J. Stroud. Not many people were happy I did. Oh, damn, do you hear those lights? Yep. Okay, I picked C.J. Stroud to win the Heisman last year. A lot of people weren't sure why, and I guess he proved why. You know, he was one of the he was the favorite at one point late in the year. Uh, Caleb Williams, though, I think I, I hate to pick favorites because outside of Young last year and Baker Mayfield a couple years ago, favorites typically don't win the Heisman. But this year, I think it's almost set in stone. Really, Caleb Williams is third, right behind the top two quarterbacks from Bama and Ohio State. I think against that conference, he's just going to tear things up with the support cast he has. He's going to thrive in year two, I think. 
Caleb Williams stat sheet stuff or he'll win the Heisman in my of opinion. Doak Walker, Braylon Allen, I think he's going to run very well behind that old line. He's a Derrick Henry size of back, but he runs like, uh, you know, a guy that has a 4-3 speed. I mean, this guy's insane for his size to be able to do what he does. I think he'll win the Doak Walker and emerge in that category. I think Texas will have a lot of balance. That's why B. John Robinson's not getting that award. Jackson Smith and the Jigba, the Blittenkopf, no doubt are there. Jim Thorpe, Riley Moss from Iowa. You know, it wasn't as great down the stretch coming back from his injury, but early on in the season, this guy was a ball hawk picking off everything, taking it to the end zone. I think he'll be the Jim Thorpe, which is the hardest uh, award probably to predict in all of football. Uh, the Benderic Award, Will Anderson, top defensive player in the country. The outwin goes to the top interior player in college football, offensive or defensive. Jalen Carter, I think, is going to hold that one down, and he's going to have a tremendous season. Lincoln Riley, coach of the year, and he's going to get USC to the playoffs. John Mackey, kind of another unanimous. Brock Bowers, the Remington, goes to the nation's top center, uh, you know, John Michael Schmitz at Minnesota, he's going to really have to anchor that O-line or replace his four starters. I think he's going to have a phenomenal season. Butkus goes to the top linebacker. That's going to be Drake Thomas from NC State. I'm kind of noticing a theme here. You know, the guys I have going places are going to be the guys that get awards. Keaton Thompson from Virginia, Horning Award for the most versatile player. He's still learning how to play wide receiver. He's a former quarterback. I think they're going to have involved in a number of different ways this year. Um, so he has to have production, you know, as the, at different positions to win the award. And I think they'll use him in the red zone as a runner more. And then, you know, Jake Moody winning the Lou Groza. And then Andy Ludwing, the Burroughs Award winner for me. I think he's going to coordinate a phenomenal offense. I love the personnel they have this season. I think Florida's going to be a great display of what he can do with those guys. And all year long, I think they're going to have a great unit. So those are my awards, Nick. Take it away. Yeah, I think Will Anderson is my Heisman pick this year. Got snubbed last year. I think that only made him want to dominate even more had an incredible season last year i think this year he'll have a great season as well he has to be in the hunt for me i love the potential you know i think people are are maybe a little worried about a defensive player potentially winning the heisman but i think he has the opportunity to do it this year if he puts up similar stats to that of last year the tackles for loss the sacks right around that ballpark i think he should definitely be advised new york and has potential to win the heisman i'm gonna pick him to win the heisman because i think that dominance is just gonna be absolutely crazy my doke walker deuce vaughn i love what he can do at kansas state that offense is a lot of fun you and i are both high on kansas state i think deuce vaughn is just a super exciting back i love the speed he possesses you know super talented top to bottom for me i think he's an exciting player to watch blintikoff you know jackson and jigabo we've talked about him at length no need to harp on that super talented wide receiver jim thorpe andrew mccumba we saw it last year really strong year at clemson stepped up big time i think he's going to continue to step up i love him as a leadership role i'm excited to see what i can see out of him excited for him for sure you know looking at will anderson again picking up another award there i like it for the outland award brian brise i think another clemson player that defensive line there is really exciting to watch i think brian brise is going to be one of the best defensive players in the acc very talented player love his size coach of the year dave dorian leading nc state to the playoff i think you have to be coach of the year at that point i love what he's building there in raleigh north carolina john mackey brock bowers award brock ba let me rephrase that the john mackey award brock bowers you know ridiculous athlete tight end great player brock bowers continue to do it for me this year remington i like that i like sharp from mississippi state i think that offensive line is very strong underrated not a lot of people talk about it i think he's gonna be in line for a great season this year protecting will rogers you know for the butt kiss bumper pool leader at arkansas it's definitely experience you know one of those guys you love to have in the locker room very strong experience i love what he can do as a tackler for the horning jameer gibbs i like what he can do in the return game strong running back you know maybe involved in the passing game as well jameer gibbs super talented guy across the board looking at the ray guy you know i have i have corsac you know punter from Rutgers. i think they'll be punting the ball a whole lot this year i love the distance he has on it strong leg excited what he can do Lou Garza as well, Noah Ruggles. I like what he can do this year as a place kicker for Ohio State. He'll probably be put up a ton of points. And then for my Broyles Award, Jim Knowles, he's going to transform that Ohio State offense. Great addition for them. I think he's got to be in line for this award for me. I'm excited to see what he can do. Yeah, that's going to be it for today's episode, guys. Nice pick with Bumper Pool. Him and Drew Sanders will be an interesting duo at linebacker this year. It's going to be it, though. Nick, as always, thank you for joining me. It's been a fun offseason. Can't wait to get this underway and to see how all these teams perform. Yeah, I'm so excited. It's going to be a great college football season. A lot of fun players returning to different programs, a lot of transferring, a lot of new coaches. Super excited for this football season. Make sure you guys like, comment, subscribe. See you next time.